Hey friends, welcome back. So today let's talk about calories versus hormones versus intracellular molecular switches like mTOR and AMPK. So there's a big debate, as you know, on the internet at large, on Instagram, on social media, where you have people that kind of fall into kind of two buckets. You have the energy balance bucket folks. This would be Lane Norton, Kevin Hall, those type of people. And their basic premise is that, you know what? This whole insulin carbohydrate model of obesity is a bunch of junk. The only thing you need to care about is your energy balance, right? If you're in a surplus of, of energy, you're gonna gain weight. If you're in a deficit, you're gonna lose weight. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit, a little bit more about the intracellular biochemistry associated with energy surpluses and deficits and why you can't disentangle surpluses and deficits from your hormones and other non-nutritive factors like circadian rhythms like inflammation, like hypoxia. There's a myriad of different things that tinker and test with the intracellular molecular switches that tell the rest of the body that we should either burn fat or store it, okay? And then you have the other camp. So that's energy balance camp, okay? That's a little bit of preview where we're going. The other camp that I fall into and Thomas DeLauer and others, and by the way, just did a great collaboration with Thomas DeLauer. I'll link the video here. And so getting back to the camp or the bucket that I sort of fall into, is this hormone camp where we know that, yeah, energy balance matters, absolutely. But we also know that energy balance matters in the context of your intracellular signaling pathways, like the growth factor, you know, kinase, mammalian target of rapamycin, mTOR, or AMPK. There's another intracellular switch or enzyme, if you will, fatty acid called malonyl-CoA that's a big regulator and governor of fatty acid synthesis versus utilization within the mitochondria of our cells, particularly the liver. Insulin regulates and helps to, and so does glucagon is very influent. I should say glucagon and, and insulin influence malonyl-CoA, which then influence fatty acid synthesis and oxidation balance. And so important things to keep in mind. So we can't ignore the hormones. That's the big thing that I wanna, your, the take home from this video. If you're confused, you're like, gosh, I trust these great people who can squat 500, 600 pounds and deadlift a lot. They're, they seem like very smart, well-to-do, well-intended people. And I, I think the same way about those people. This isn't a, you know who's right or who's wrong thing. And then you're confused by other people saying, well, what about the hormones? What about insulin? What about glucagon? What about growth hormone, IGF-1? And so what I want you to understand is that there's truth in both these contexts, right? We, we can't just focus on hormones and, and ignore the energy balance. That, that's not good, you know, good advice. We can't just focus on energy balance and ignore the hormones because it's impossible to disentangle them. So let's talk about that. Uh, let, let's first, first talk about this mythical idea that the body kind of knows, independent of hormones, that you're in a calorie deficit or excess, okay? Uh, the way that your cells, okay, so every tissue type is a little bit different, but the way that your cells regulate and know whether or not you're in a state of anabolism, where there's a lot of energy around, nutrients are around, so it's a pro-growth state, or you're essentially in a state of catabolism, or also colloquially called you know, like energy deficit, right? So surplus is an anabolic state, a deficit is considered like a catabolic state, right? So, so what pivots that balance? Well, it comes down to the combination of hormones and intracellular kinases. Kinases are effectively enzymes that are like dominoes, right? You know, you've seen the videos where these dominoes wind around, it just starts with one domino tripping over. So a kinase functions sort of like that. So you have excess nutrients, you have insulin, you have glucose, you have growth factors, a lot of calories, if you will, floating around extracellularly. Okay, so those, those messages are translated within the cell and effectively turn on or turn off different signaling hubs. One main hub, as you know, a growth factor hub is called mTOR. So mTOR will then stimulate lipid synthesis, it will stimulate pro-growth type pathways within the body and potentially cause people to gain body fat, right? Obviously, there's muscle protein synthesis wrapped into that, but I'm trying to make this very simple. But again, energy excesses are not the only things that affect the kinases, ultimately, that lead to mTOR stimulation. There's hypoxia. There's other hormones, like, for example, insulin and IGF-1, right? There's inflammation. There, there's a, a lot of non-nutritive factors that ultimately affect this key pro-growth pathway that is a signature of anabolism. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's talk about the catabolic side here for a minute. So let's say you're in an energy deficit, you've done a lot of fasted cardio, 
you're eating an 800 calorie a day diet for your contest prep, right? So you're in a deficit. Again, how does your body know you're in a deficit? Because different hormones are upregulated. Glucose is low, insulin is low, glucagon is high, norepinephrine is gonna be high, IGF-1 is gonna be low. There's a signature of hormones that translates into the cell by way of kinases. One of the main kinases involved in the catabolic pathway, energy deficit pathway, would be AMPK, adenosine monophosphate kinase, okay? This kinase, again, is triggered by glucagon. It's triggered, and then glucagon will actually then trigger uh, malonyl-CoA, and malonyl-CoA, which is a fatty acid, long-chain fatty acid uh, within the mitochondria, and that instead, when malonyl-CoA is high, we have fatty acid synthesis. When it's low, we have fatty acid breakdown, and then we also have the synthesis of ketones. And so, again, you can't separate hormones from intracellular nutrient sensing receptors and kinases that ultimately govern whether or not you're in a deficit or an excess. And that's the premise of this video. And the whole point of talking about this is so that we can convey this message to people to give them better advice. You know, childhood obesity rates, childhood diabetes, and obesity-like diseases are sky high at unprecedented levels epidemiologically throughout the world. It's not just in North America, although in the US we are the fattest and most overweight in, in all categories, in the young, in the old, in adults, adolescents, you know, there's a major problem. We've been telling people to balance calories for a long time. I think it's, it's important that we move on from that narrative and talk about how the individual nutrients that comprise those calories, how those ultimately affect our nutrient sensing pathways and our hormones. Because if we can control that, we can control, guess what? The phenotype of our body, the expression, whether or not we're gonna be lean or overweight. And so even if I'm, even if calories are the ultimate governing factor, I'm not saying I'm wrong or right on this, but let's just say they are hypothetically for a moment. If, even if we give that message to people and just say, look, it doesn't matter when you eat, it doesn't matter how you eat, it doesn't matter if you exercise or not, you just need to stay in calorie balance, it, sends, it still sends the wrong message. And I think that wrong message has been being been sent for a long time to people. And so they're kind of like, I don't care if I get, you know, balance my circadian rhythms. It doesn't matter about the type of exercise that I do. If I'm in an oxygen deprivation, you know, and, and create oxygen debt during my training session or not, or if I just stand here on the treadmill, as long as I'm burning the same amount of calories. Uh, what about my microbiome? Who cares about your microbiome if you're in a calorie you know, uh, equilibrium and so forth. Remember that one scientist uh, at Kansas State where he ate a bunch of junk food and he actually lost weight? See, you can eat junk food too. And so I think it sends the wrong message to people. And we now know more about cellular and molecular biology than we ever have before. And our, you know, scientists are progressing the field so much more quickly. And so now we can measure indirectly in white blood cells, autophagy signaling and various factors that regulate mTOR, for example. And there's different drugs that are coming on the market that affect mTOR and AMPK and these different intracellular kinases that ultimately govern not only growth factors, and nutrient excess versus surplus, uh, but they also govern other things like cancer and neoplastic growth and aging responses and the integrity of our cells and protein aggregate accumulation and mitochondrial function and much more. So again, I just wanted to share this video to get you to think a little bit differently about this beyond just the calorie, to realize that again, calories matter, but hormones ultimately govern and are canvassed over the calorie narrative because hormones and growth factors and a myriad of other non-nutritive factors like inflammation, cytokines, hypoxia, you know, circadian rhythms, all that, they tug and pull and, and tinker with the intracellular kinases that ultimately are the, the, the main cellular switches that determine whether or not we're in a deficit or a surplus. The point being, I don't want to confuse you, keep doing exactly what you're doing, but just think about what sort of messages the food that you're eating or the exercises that you are or are not doing or the sleep that you are or not consistent about, <laughs> you know, or the antibiotics or the synthetic sweeteners or the other factors, what are those factors also doing 
to your intracellular signaling switches because we're hearing so much more about the science of mTOR, the science of AMPK. This is why drugs like rapamycin are being evaluated potentially for in human clinical trials for the treatment of dementia and looking at Alzheimer's and, and longevity. And we see like metformin and other compounds, spermidine. I mean, there's a lot of new research coming out because it turns out that these main molecular switches, again, that determine whether or not you're in a deficit or surplus are key whole body switches in the sense that uh, if we can kind of get these right, we can dial in and optimize our health. So sorry for the long winded video. I, I hope the, some of the animations helped with that. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I would be honored if you do subscribe, you can hit that like button and, and uh, you can also share this with a friend or family member if you like this sort of content. And that way we can spread advanced knowledge to people to help them make more educated lifestyle decisions. So very grateful that you're tuning in all the way. Hope you have an awesome day wherever you are in the world and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.